by the end of this video, when we go to our shop NBC, talk to him, and open up the shop, we'll be able to sell our items, get some coins, and also buy items from our merchant shop. We're also going to be able to save our game so that our inventory and the shop stock is saved when reloading. Very cool, very exciting. So currently in our shop, all we can do is drag our items around. We don't want to be able to drag these around anymore. So if I go to my prefabs and check out our main item prefab, if we scroll down, we can see we've got this item drag handler script, which controls dragging around in our player's inventory. We're going to want a new script that handles when we click on items in our shop. So in my assets folder, I'm going to right click and go create C sharp script, and I'll call this shop item handler. I'll double click on this to open it up. And we're not going to want our start or update here. But at the very top, next to mono behavior, I'm going to go comma, I pointer, click handler. This will have a red underline, so we'll hover over, go show potential fixes, and using Unity Engine dot event systems. We'll use this to check our right click. But first of all, we'll go private bool is shop item. And we'll also want a public slot for our original inventory slot. Then we're going to set up a constructor to initialize our items. So we'll go public void initialize. And in the parameters, we'll want a bool for shop item. Then we'll do arrow functions. So equals greater than is shop item equals shop item. That way, when we initialize this, we'll set up in our script whether this is a shop item or not. Now, if we hover over our eye pointer click handler, we can do show potential fixes and use this to implement our interface. We can use this to set up our right clicking. So we'll go if event data dot button equals pointer event data dot input button dot write. Then we can say if this is a shop item, then we can call our function to buy our item. Else we'll call our function to sell our item. Of course, these haven't been written yet. So let's go ahead and write those. First of all, we'll get a private void for buy item, where we'll want an item item equals get component item and a shop slot slot equals get component in parent shop slot. We'll do a quick if check and say if not item, so is it null or not, or if not slot, then we'll return as we've right clicked somewhere that wasn't on an item in its slot. Otherwise, if those are both not null, we'll say if currency controller dot instant dot get gold is less than slot dot item price will return here. And this is where you'd be able to do some kind of message to say you don't have enough gold. Maybe you want a little pop up, but I'll just debug log to say there's not enough gold. Otherwise, we do have enough gold. So we'll say game object item prefab equals find object of type item dictionary then we can call get item prefab pass in our item dot ID to get a fresh prefab of the item that we're trying to buy and say if our inventory controller dot instance dot add item and pass in our item prefab in our currency controller dot instance can spend gold and pass in the slot dot item price our shop controller dot instance dot refresh player inventory display can be called and we're also going to need to add a new function to our shop controller to remove this item from the shop. Now our add item function returns a ball. It's true if it is successfully added, else if it's false, it means that our inventory is full. So I'll just put a little line here to say that our inventory is full. Now with this function, we can copy it and use it up in our right click event. And we'll scroll down to add our private void sell item. We're going to want these top three lines from our buy item, same as above. But in this if and return, we're also going to want to go or not original inventory slot. So now we'll go item inventory item. So inv item equals original inventory slot dot current item question mark to make sure this isn't null and go dot get component item check if not inventory item. So if this is null, we'll return as we've right clicked on a shop slot that has no item in it. Else if our inventory item dot quantity is greater than one. We'll go inventory item dot remove from stack and pass in one. So else if there wasn't more than one, we will destroy the original inventory slot dot current item and set this current item to equals null. Then outside this else, we'll want to say inventory controller dot instance dot rebuild item counts, our currency controller dot instance dot add gold and add our slot dot item price, our shop controller dot instance dot refresh player inventory display. And again, just like in buying, we're going to need another new function in our shop controller where instead of removing items from the shop, we're going to add that item to our shop. 
So cool, with this function we can copy this and add it up in our else. So for now that's all done. We've got these two functions to add in our shop controller next and then we'll come back to this to finish it up. So let's go back to Unity and in my assets I have my shop controller script. So we can hop on over to that, double click on this to open it up. And in here down the very bottom we currently have an item drag handler on our items. So we'll go item drag handler drag handler equals item instance dot get component and pass in item drag handler and we'll say if drag handler so this is not null. Then we'll want to go drag handler dot enabled equals false, just to turn off this dragging capability. Then we'll want to go shop item handler, which is the new one we've just written, which I'll call handler, and go equals item instance dot add component shop item handler. So we're adding this script to this object. We'll go handler dot initialize that function we just wrote and pass in is shop to see if this is a shop or not. And we'll say if this is not the shop, so if not is shop, we can say handler dot original inventory slot equals original slot. Cool, now we're replacing our dragging with our new right clicking functionality. That's all done. Let's write our two new functions that we need still in our shop item handler. So we needed a public void add item to shop where we're gonna want to pass in an int of our item ID and an int of our quantity. We'll check our current shop and add an exclamation mark at the beginning to say if not current shop so this is null that was my cat <laughs> we'll return otherwise if we do have a shop we can go current shop dot add to stock pass in our item id and our quantity and then refresh our shop's display very easy next up we're going to want a public bool for our remove item from shop and once again we're going to want our int item id and int quantity we're going to want this check again for our if not current shop and return false if our current shop is null. Else we're going to want a bool for success, which will set to equal current shop dot remove from shop stock, pass in our item ID and pass in our quantity. If this is successful, so if success, then we'll refresh our shop display and we'll return success. Cool, nice and easy. Now we can go back to our shop item handler, the script that we've got just up here. You can hold down control and click on this script name to jump to this script. Then down in our buy item, we can see here as we buy an item, we're going to want to remove it from our shop. So let's go shop controller dot instance dot remove item from shop and pass in our item dot ID comma one. If you want to add in multi selling and buying, this is where you can just add in how many you've selected to buy or sell. Cool, now down in our sell item, we're going to want our shop controller dot instance dot add item to shop. Once again, pass in our item ID and one. Cool, and that's all we need. Let's go back to Unity and test this out. Shouldn't need any setup, we should be able to just press play. Now when we go up to our shop NPC, we can right click on this heart potion and see it appears in our player inventory and the quantity went down by one. Oh, and if you check, our currency is also going down in the top. Yup. And now let's take a look if I sell from my player inventory by right clicking, we should get five more coins. One, yep. And sell our potion back. We've lost 20 coins. You can't just buy and sell items for the full price back. You can customize this if you want on your item sell price modifier. Now the problem is if I buy out all his green potions, close this down and save, then I'll close my game and press play again. And we'll check in our shop the stock is refreshed we want to be saving our merchant shop so he doesn't have infinite stock unless of course that's how you want it in your game so let's go back to unity and currently on my game controller object i have a save controller we can double click on this to open it up and in my save game i have a script for save data i'm going to hold down control and then click on this save data to open it up and in here we can add some new fields we're going to want a public int for our player gold any public list of our shop instance data, which we'll write in a second. I'll name this shop states and set this to equal new. Cool, I'll copy this chest save data and reuse it for our shop instance data just because I'm lazy to type it out. So we've got a public class shop instance data. We want this public string to be shop ID. And instead of this bool, we're going to want a public list of our shop item data to know the stock of this certain shop. Once again, let's copy this, paste it down below and create some shop item data. In here, we're going to want an int for our item ID and another int for our quantity. 
Cool, we should be able to use these in our save controller to save and load this data into our shops. So let's go to our save controller and at the top, we're gonna want a private shop NPC array, which I'll call shops. This will track all our shops in our scene, which we'll populate down in our initialize components, where we'll go shops equals find object of type and pass in shop NPC. Then down in our save game, we want to go comma after our hand in quest IDs and add in player gold equals currency controller dot instance dot get gold comma shop state equals get shop states as we'll do this in its own function outside of our save game. Oh, we've got an error up here. I did find object of type. It should be find objects of type. So this passes back an array. Sorry about that. So we're going to want a private list for our shop instance data called get shop states, similar as our chest one. We're going to want a new list of shop instance data, which I'll call shop states. And we'll say for each bar shop in shops, shop instance data, shop data equals new shop instance data, curly braces. And we'll go shop ID equals shop dot shop ID comma stock equals new list of shop item data. And we we'll want a semicolon at the end of those curly braces. Then still within this for each, we're going to want another for each of bar stock item in shop dot get current stock, which we wrote in our previous video. We can go shop data dot stock dot add new shop item data curly braces and go item id equals stock item dot item id comma quantity equals stock item dot quantity and a semicolon outside of that bracket cool then outside the stock for each but not the shop for each we'll go shop states dot add shop data so that is within our shops for each and outside of that we'll then return our shop states. Cool, so we're basically looping around these to gather all our data that's in our game. So make sure you've got this in your save game for your shop states equals get shop states. Next, let's go down to our load game and we can again use our chest states as an example. So we're going to do something similar where we have load chest states. We'll do that in a second as we're also going to want load shop states. But we'll pass in our save data dot shop state. Oh, and then just that, we're also going to want our currency controller dot instance and to set the gold to our save data dot player gold, which is nice and easy. So let's go down to where we've got our load chest state. And similarly, we're going to want a private void load shop states where we'll pass in a list of shop instance data and I'll call this shop states. We'll check and make sure this isn't null by saying if exclamation mark shop states return in case we haven't saved anything like that before. Oh, we can't do that with a list. So we'll just go equals equals null. So if this isn't null, we can go for each bar shop in shops, which is our shops in our game that we made up at, that we made at the top. We'll say shop instance data, shop data equals shop states dot first or default. And we'll search for our S arrow function S dot shop ID where this matches our shop dot shop ID. So we're trying to find some save data for the shop in our game. If our shop data does not equal null, we'll go list shop NPC dot shop stock item and call this loaded stock equals a new list of the shop NPC dot stock item and go for each var item data in shop data dot stock. We can add this by going loaded stock dot add and adding a new shop NPC shop stock item curly braces item ID equals item data dot item ID and quantity equals item data dot quantity and semicolon at the end still inside this if but outside of this for each we can then go shop dot set stock to loaded stock so we can override any default stock that the shop has with our save data stock Oh, I spelt load wrong in my load shop states. So cool, let's scroll on up to our load game and make sure you have load shop states and passing in our save data dot shop states. Very cool. Now our saving should be working. Once again, to find your save location, if you're using a weird path, you can put a breakpoint in our initialized components and start the debugger up here with the play button. 
and when we press play, this will hit our breakpoint. We can hover over our save location and see where this is stored. So if I go to this folder, I can see my save data saved here. I'm going to delete this so our player will have money again as I spent it all in our previous test. If you instead want a different save location that's a bit easier to access for testing, we can just set this to our application's data path and I'll rename this to be testdata.json which I'll show you where this appears just in a moment when we next save. So now when we press play we should have a fresh save file. If I go over to my shop NPC, I've got nothing in my inventory and I've got 100 coins. So I'm going to buy out these two potions. Close this on down. If I check my inventory, you can see I've got two potions in here. So I'll go to my settings and press save. Close down my game. As you can see, our test data has appeared in our assets folder. This is much easier for you to check or delete if you need to reset your game data. So cool, when I press play, I can check my inventory and see I've still got those two potions. But we can also go on over to our shop NPC and see that his stock has also been saved as well as our currency amount. So very cool. Our game now saves and loads shop stock as well as allowing us to buy and sell items. Yay. Now we've got a pretty good template for most top-down games. There is so much more I could add to this generic template, but maybe we start adding some fun stuff like monsters and combat. Huh? What'd you think? Pretty cool, but we'll see how it goes. As always, if you want to grab all the code, all the scripts for this whole channel, you can check it out on my Patreon or grab this whole completed template, the whole thing set up. You can grab that on itch.io for all finished features and also including future updates. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!